Greetings, this is August 7th and we have a chance to look at some data that's come in since 12.30 a.m. and the MODIS and the VIIRS have displayed some infrared hotspots. But there is a lot of cloud cover in the area. We're not seeing everything that's happening on the ground. You're going to need that ground report from BC Wildfire and through your local regional districts. We're looking at infrared in the southern portion of British Columbia from yesterday and now today. That's a reduction in what is visible from these satellite systems. So let's take a look on a, kind of a generic screen. This is information from yesterday and now today. Normally, I'd be pretty ecstatic to see that amount of reduction in infrared. But without being able to see what's going on on the ground, I'm cautious. Here we see the cloud cover from the MODIS update yesterday. It's showing that large band of precipitation that's moved from the southwest coast all the way up into the central interior. If we jump to Windy and look at the forecast here, we've got the flag at the White Rock Lake area only showing 0.3 millimeters over the next 12 hours almost two millimeters over the next 24 hours and could reach almost three millimeters over the next three days. So not a lot of rain coming into the Okanagan Valley or the North Okanagan, whereas around 100 mile house, a flat lake fire zone, five millimeters over the next 24 hours and uh, up to nine millimeters over the next three days. So it depends on where you are in the province, how much of this rain you may receive. Right now, the Okanagan Valley is looking a little drier. This is the area over the North Okanagan, uh, Chase, Armstrong, Vernon, on the NASA's firm system. And looking at all the accumulated infrared for today, August 7th, there does appear to be slight expansion on the northern flanks of this fire heading eastward. It's moved very slightly towards Falkland. That's the section of the fire that's south of Highway 97, south of Westwold. We can see it here close to the bottom of the screen. There's also those hot spots on the upper left-hand portion of the screen north of Monty Lake. That has also moved northeastwards. The southeast flank that was approaching Okanagan Lake, that appears to have pushed northward slightly. And we're not able to see infrared activity closer to Okanagan Lake at this time. We'll have to check for more updates when those satellites pass over again later in the day. Under that cloud cover, there are considerable forested blocks. So if you are north, northeast, or east of these fire zones, you want to be prepared and know what's between you and the fire line, what your access routes are, and keep an eye on the wind conditions. Currently, they're flowing prevalent from the southwest. So that may push the fire uh, more northwards than eastwards. Uh, so if you're north of these fire lines, you want to be prepared and check for the ground report at BC Wildfire and with your local regional district. We're moving westwards now. This is the Tremont Creek Fire. Ashcroft and Cache Creek are on the left hand side of the screen. Uh, that's Savannah up at the top of the screen. And we see this cluster of MODIS infrared that showed up at 12.30 a.m. It's made an expansion towards Savannah. So again, if you are north of these fire lines, when it hits open ground, if the winds are strong, you want to be prepared ahead of time. We're moving north to the Flat Lake fire zone. We still see activity on that western flank. There are a couple of hot spots over on the northeastern flank closer to Highway 97, but much more subdued than we saw two, three days ago. There has been rain in the area and hopefully this is aiding wildfire crews. This is the Pavilion Fire north of Fountain Valley. We see three main clusters there. They've been moving west of the Fraser River up the mountainsides. Uh, they are in dense forested blocks in rugged terrain and they keep popping up. So this fire is still active. 
and moving just south, this is the Lytton fire that's moved east of Lytton up to Spence's Bridge. We see a lot of activity on that southeast corner still. Uh, there are some hot spots closer to Lytton within the existing fire perimeter and there's also activity up on the east side of the Fraser at the northwest flank of this fire zone. So if your intent is to travel north of Lytton up to Lillooet, check with Drive BC and check with BC Wildfire so that you know what access you'll have to the area. And due to cloud cover, potential haze, I'm not seeing really any infrared in the South Okanagan or around Lower Arrow Lake, a few hot spots there. Also around Manning Park, Highway 3, south of Princeton, not seeing infrared there. I know it is burning, so again, it's very frustrating knowing where fire is but not being able to see it. We're moving up to the Shushwap, the North Okanagan. We can see Mabel Lake at the lower portion of the screen. There is activity on the east side of Mabel Lake. That's stretched northeastwards over the last few days. Uh, there does appear to be reduced activity around Sycamus, uh, the North Seymour Arm, and the infrared displayed closest to Sycamus does appear to have moved eastward away from the community. And finally, we've moved back to the White Rock Lake fire. This is infrared from yesterday uh, showing the expansion, and now we're rolling into the heat detections for today. There was very slight northeastward movement, eastward movement in these fire zones based on the available data that we can see. Let's zoom in and see it again. This is infrared from yesterday and now today. Very slight movement but we may not be seeing everything plus the fire is uh, throwing up its embers and sparks and uh, causing progression to go northeastwards and eastwards. Checking back with Windy for the forecast. Currently it's coming from the southwest, 17 kilometers an hour over the White Rock Lake fire zone. And if we zoom out, we can see that it's almost an isolated area of increased wind speed. Uh, most of the central interior up from, to, from 100 Mile House all the way over to Nelson, there is reduced wind speeds. But in that region, there is the potential for gusts in the afternoon coming from the southwest but hopefully tonight it will start to switch and bring some more precipitation. I'm going to leave you with my lucky ducks. They've worked for me in the past. We are on a fire watch uh, for the people in the North Okanagan, the people in the Falkland and Westwold area, uh, up to Chase and uh, the people in Savannah. We must be cautious because we aren't seeing all the relevant data. So do check with those ground reports. Uh, they're very important. Stay in contact with friends and family. Have your access routes planned ahead of time. Thank you very much for watching. Be safe and keep your nose to the breeze.